your host, Dr. James Haney. Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic today is Tennessee State University, and of course we're fortunate to have with us in our studio the president of Tennessee State University, Dr. James Hefner. And Dr. Hefner, let me welcome you to the show this morning. Thank you very much. Dr. Hefner, you've been with us on other occasions, and I think that uh, then you gave us some information about your background and some of the things that led you to Tennessee State University. But uh, that was quite a while ago, and let's get that same kind of information for those viewers who might not know who Dr. James Hefner is and some of the things that eventually led you to uh, the presidency of Tennessee State University. Well, I've been at Tennessee State University now for oh, roughly four years. I came here in April of 1991. I was president of uh, Jackson State University seven years before that time and a Charles E. Merrill professor of economics at Morehouse College and uh, after that um, or prior to that, I was uh, at uh, Tuskegee as the provost. So if you had to put it in the sequential order, uh, Morehouse, Tuskegee, Jackson State, and, uh, and Tennessee State. And I guess uh, uh, the reason that I may have ended up as president is that uh, I had some very good people uh, working with me. One of my mentors is the president of uh, Morehouse, Hugh Gloucester. And so Dr. Gloucester encouraged me while I was at Morehouse to look at higher education administration. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had another person, the president of uh, Tuskegee, Ben Payton, when I became his provost. Uh, again, I had encouragement to, to go upstairs and I became president of Jackson State after 22 months at uh, Tuskegee. And I was there for uh, seven years at Jackson State and four years here at Tennessee State. What we like to do, Dr. Hefner, on this program is to uh, <clears throat> sort of profile our guests to uh, encourage our young people to uh, perhaps strive to attain the same thing that our guests have attained. And let's do that in terms of your background. In, in, in a sense, you've given us some information about your administrative background, but what about your boyhood and the uh, growing up in uh, the state that you grew up in and the things that were important that eventually led you to higher education and then eventually to all of these uh, administrative positions? Let's talk about that for a few minutes. I was um, raised in a, in a relatively poor family. Um, I um, went to school, elementary school, in Brevard, North Carolina, which is the western part of the state. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have any books uh, in, my, um, uh, in my house. And so uh, the principal, I guess she thought that I was a rather bright uh, person, uh, she said, well, what you can do is come by my house and uh, read the encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. So uh, for eight years, while I was in elementary school, um, I would go stop at her house on the way home mm -hmm. and I would read the encyclopedia. I kept doing that um, over the years. Uh, of course, I graduated um, valedictorian of my uh, elementary uh, class, my elementary class, and uh, salutatorian. I was beaten out mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. a young lady at the high school level, and I had uh, some fellowships um, to some very good schools, uh, Duke University being one. But there was a gentleman who came from North Carolina A&T State University and said, look, we would like for you to uh, join us uh, to come to North Carolina A&T State University in Greensboro, North Carolina. Well, the same year that I became a student at uh, North Carolina A&T was when Jesse Jackson mm -hmm. uh, transferred from Illinois. So Jesse Jackson and I became uh, schoolmates, and we were influenced by the same lady by the name of Dr. Juanita Tate. She taught economics, and uh, apparently I did well in the first class that she taught me, and, and for three years, uh, she had me to come to her house from four to five every day. And the food, uh, we always talk about the food in the, uh, at the dining hall, and so uh, I was quite uh, uh, pleased to get off campus to eat in, in her, in her, at her house. And so from four to five, we would talk economics, and she would feed me. She had never produced a black PhD mm -hmm. in economics. And so when I, uh, and so she selected me. When I graduated, uh, I again received a fellowship to Duke. Mm -hmm. And she said, no, I want you to study at uh, 
at Atlanta University under uh, uh, Dr. Sam Westerfield. Mm -hmm. When I went to Atlanta University, uh, John F. Kennedy had become president, and he called up the Harvard graduates, and mm -hmm. of course, uh, Dr. Westerfield was one. So Westerfield became uh, ambassador to Liberia, so I ended up going to Mm -hmm. uh, Atlanta University without uh, Dr. Westerfield. Mm -hmm. I then started teaching after I received my master's uh, in a year's time and I was very young when I started mm -hmm. teaching at the college level and after a few years Dr. Tate called me again and she said, well she had stayed close to me, mm -hmm. said it's time for you to go back to school. Mm -hmm. And so I received my doctorate in 1971, the year that she uh, retired and I became her first African-American uh, PhD in economics mm -hmm. and for her she had been teaching for years mm -hmm. to turn out one person to go in her field was mm -hmm. a successful life for her. Mm -hmm. And so uh, all of those experiences simply gave you uh, additional information and certainly it gives you an insight into some of the things that we'd like to talk about today. But let's talk about uh, Tennessee State University. I think that uh, most of the people in our viewing area know Tennessee State University quite well. But let's, from your perspective, let's talk about that institution and perhaps give our audience some highlights of some of the things that have been going on at Tennessee State University since the last time we had an opportunity to uh, talk with you. I still marvel over what is going on at Tennessee State University. Um, when I came here, my friend said, well, Jim Hefner, you've moved upstairs because I was president of, of Jackson State, but I came to a comprehensive urban uh, land grant institution uh, with um, a, a lot more students and more faculty and more resources. There's a metamorphosis going on at the university. We are a caterpillar changing into a butterfly. Mm -hmm. uh, we received uh, $112 million from the state to put up roughly eight new buildings by 1996. We built five already. Uh, every building on campus, including the downtown campus, will be renovated. But that's not what it's all about. I mean, you can put up buildings and you can have $112 million, but people make an institution. Mm -hmm. And so what we've been doing is we've been uh, obviously enhancing uh, the quality of our, of our faculty and our students. In fact, uh, just recently, uh, we established a chapter of Phi Kappa Phi, mm -hmm. which is the most prestigious honor society comprising all academic areas. Mm -hmm. We are the only uh, college in Nashville with the most prestigious honor society comprising all academic areas. Mm -hmm. Also recently, uh, we became accredited by the American Assembly of Collegiate Schools of mm -hmm. Business. Mm -hmm. Now only, oh, I guess.